Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to part two on testing central heating water. Now, if this is the first video you're watching, you've started at the wrong place, you need to go back over here and start at part one. But if you've seen part one, welcome to part two. And in this video, we're going to be using this. This is the Sentinel System Quick Check thingy -ma bob which basically we put our samples in here and we send it off to a laboratory for them to test to see how much inhibitor we've got in the system. So let's stop messing about and let's find out what this is all about and let's just get on with it. Now let's have a look at this test and see what we actually get in the pack. So if we open the back what we get inside first thing is this which is actually the prepaid envelope to send the samples back to uh, an independent so it's going to go back to an independent laboratory not sentinel so that's where we're going to send it to that's the first thing so then you get two tubes so test tubes one where you will put your cold mains in what you're filling the system with the second one will actually be our heating system water. Okay, to keep them separated in the pack, you get two stickers. This one saying mains water, and this one saying system water. Okay, and they're also numbered so the samples don't get mixed up. Then we also get this form to fill in. So So we also get this form, and on this form it says your details and the system details. Okay, so that's what we're going to fill in there. And then inside is a little card which gives you your instructions. So that's what you get in this pack. So the first thing we need to do is we need to fill one of these test tubes up with our system water we've got here. Now it says fill it up to the top. So I guess it means up to this line here. Okay, so we filled that up. Make sure our top's on nice and tight. I'll make sure that's dry before I put the sticker on. I think I better dry it off now, Anna. So, got an old piece of cloth, make sure that's nice and dry. And then I better put this sticker on, which says sister water, so they don't get mixed up. Let's let's stick this sticker on the system water. My word, that's sticky. Sticks like the proverbial um, sweets to the blanket. Okay, so that's our system water in the in the test tube and system water labelled. We just got to go to the tap now and fill this with our town's mains, what we filled the heating system with, and stick that sticker on. So let's get over to the tap and do that. Now, this is a tap just across from the combi boiler where we've taken the sample from. So uh, let's fill this up. Fill it up to the top, to the mark. So that's our cold water sample, let's get it dried off. Let's uh, get this sticker on. So that's the two sample tubes, or test tubes, ready to go off to be tested. So I've got my two sample bottles. What I'm going to do is, I'll stick that back in, I'm going to put them actually back in with the uh, 
sheet which I've filled in. So I've filled all my information on there to send it back. So I'll put them in there and I shall put it in this prepaid envelope. There is some self adhesive tape here to seal the bag up. Just like that. So it's all sealed up. So, what I can do tonight now on the way home is take that to the post office and get it posted off. And let's see what the results come back and let's see how long it takes for the results to come back. So today is the 2nd of September 2020 and I'm going to be posting it tonight and let's see when the results come back. They've asked for my email address so I guess they're going to email me the results. So off to the post office then. My word. <laughs> Summer's officially over then. It's absolutely chucking it down. Anyway. Got my little package to take to the um, post office. So, let's get out of here. So, arrived at the post office. <coughs> first things first, make sure I put my mask on. And uh, let's get in and take this. Now, the lady in the post office has just told me uh, I didn't have to take it to the post office. I could have just got it into the post box if it had gone through the slot. It goes in a letterbox, so technically I could have just posted it in the post box, but I wanted to bring it here. So the time now is four o'clock on the Wednesday, the 2nd of September 2020. So let's see now when we actually get the results back by email. So, uh, see you soon. And the results are here. Now, remember, I sent this at 4 pm on the 2nd of September 2020, which was a Wednesday. A lovely Wednesday because it hammered it down. And it returned yesterday, which was Monday, the 7th of September, at 9 30 in the evening via an email so that's when I received the email so let's have a look at the results shall we it says they received it on the 3rd of the 9th 2020 um, so that was good and it says the appearance has got a big green tick on it so it looks good the pH is good and they've not put any comments in the boxes it says conductivity, it's got a green tick, it's got calcium hardness, it's got a, a statement aside which it says main water hardness is low and would not normally cause lime scale formation. Well I would expect it to be that because we're in the northwest, so we shouldn't get any hardness. It says iron, got a tick, copper, got a tick, and it says aluminium, got a tick. But then it says X800 concentration. Now you saw me pour it in part one into the magnetic filter and I circulated it around for about half an hour, something like that. And then I took the sample again, but they said the X100 levels are very high, possibly insufficient circulation before sampling. I know there was inhibitor in that system beforehand, but their test didn't pick it up so whether they're now picking up other chemicals in there i don't know now for the mains water down at the bottom it says appearance has passed it says it's clear and slightly turbid what does that mean anyway hey mr phone what does turbid mean turbid means of a liquid cloudy opaque or thick with suspended matter It says its pH is 6.7 and it should be between 6.5 and 8.5, so that's good. 
it says its conductivity is a pass it says its calcium hardness it said mains water results is 22 and it says system water results was 21 and it says minimum 75% of mains unless treated with sufficient Sentinel X100 so I guess that's the pass then it then says copper not 0.17 so it says one maximum if treated with sufficient Sentinel X100 so that must be a pass because we got 0.17 it says aluminium it says zero because they're all stainless steel heat exchangers on that system and then it says Sentinel X100 7.13 and it says a minimum of 1% so we've got a massive amount of Sentinel by just pouring it into that test point and I did circulate it round it wasn't a dodgy test at all so that's the results what have come back from Sentinel now then that test if you want to set, buy one of these tests, they cost £72. That's the cheapest I could find it. And then plus fat, 72 quid. So thanks Sentinel for sending me that, because 72 quid, that's a lot of money. Now we've got to start doing these tests. And who's going to pick up the money for this? Who's going to pick up the extra 72 quid? If you pass that cost on to the customer, the customer is going to go somewhere else if they see the installations 100 quid cheaper, if the guy hasn't added on the tests. So it's, um, it's a very, very expensive test. Okay, so we've got to make sure we do clean the system, we flush the system. You can do that with chemicals. We need to put a magnetic filter, even though the regulations, oh, why they did this, said should have. Why did it say must have? So it says should have a filter, because the filters are amazing. They do what they're supposed to do. They protect the boiler if you put them in the right place. It's the manufacturer's instructions. And then once we've cleaned the system and, we te and we've checked it with a turbidity test tube, we know everything's clean. We've got our inhibitor in, should we need to worry about sending the samples off for a test? I don't think so, okay? Not when you've installed it and you've done all your tests and done all your cleaning. When you go back to service it, if you have installed that boiler correctly to the benchmark, to the manufacturer's instructions and to the British standards, you know all you'd have to do then would be test to see if there's enough inhibitor still in there and it does say in the regulations every five years you should drop the system and completely put fresh water and inhibitor in there so that's what we're supposed to do so if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thanks to Sentinel for sending me this stuff. Otherwise, I want to be doing this video. Cheers, guys.